Hail Reckoners and welcome! Today's indie game is Lucid. This is a, so you got X and C. So this is um the third time I've played this game just because of various problems that I have foolishly, they're really my own fault, but uh, not a cold LP by any stretch of the imagination. However, I probably should pretend like it is so any mistakes I make uh, appear like, oh, it was my first time playing, I didn't know, but anyway. If I'm making mistakes now, it's going to be embarrassing. So this is the egg number two. The goal is to find 13 eggs in this platformer. And the first time I played this game, I did not see this egg. I just walked over here and off of this edge and fell down because I don't think I had a really clear concept on purple being stuff you could run through. So that was fun because I had 12 eggs and I spent, well, I, you know, 10 minutes or whatever looking for that 13th egg. I was like, fine, I'll go back to the beginning. That up there is the 13th egg, we'll get that last. Uh, one advantage to me having played this before is, while I will still make mechanical mistakes, I will theoretically uh, play this through in an efficient manner without any backtracking whatsoever. I did it. That jump took me a long time to get down properly. Uh, largely because if you walk off a edge like that, see it's a little fall and you can't jump, so I just walk right into the spikes a lot. Oh, I didn't think I jumped hard enough. This is variable jumping, obviously, so you gotta do those soft jumps. And so one thing I really like about this game is uh, the music is, is quite cool, but obviously it looks like a lot of the games that I play on this channel because I like the way they look. And one thing it does, which I quite like, of games that adopt this older, more nostalgic look, is they'll do something that was technically impossible at the time that these graphics were more current looking. And specifically I'm talking about this pulse effect, which is super slick looking, and uh, I don't know, it reminds me of something like, you know, the, the gun smoke effect from uh, Westerado or something. Something that's just... A little small detail that looks really slick and doesn't stand out. First death. Dang it, I was hoping to go for a deathless run. But yeah, so uh, when you die in this game, you reset to the last time you zoned, which is not too punishing, but certainly not too friendly. I can get very tedious making this run over and over again. If I can do this in... Gosh, dang it, those hitboxes are... I thought I had it perfectly. Soft jumps. Sometimes I'm like, I hit the button as lightly as I possibly could and I still rock it up into the spike, so... My my senses clearly are not super consistent. It's also really easy, because I you have to hold X to jump longer, so that's a long jump. It's really easy to be holding X and you hit this ramp and uh, get a second jump up into those spikes. Quite easy. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, okay. Now this part is tricky. Got it. It's easiest if I can just step onto the... Here we go. Oh my gosh! So that's the ramp thing I'm complaining about, where I hit left before I hit jump. So you don't have to jump off the ramp, but that jumps really hard because it's a far jump, so you have to hold X, but if you jump too high too quickly, you will hit your head on the ceiling and not make it all the way across. So we'll see. I'll give this... Not too many more tries before we go to fast forward land. This is the hardest part of the game. After this, the game actually gets a lot easier, which is a little interesting because this part of the game is, um, yeah, I made it. Uh, only one more jump to do. Uh, this part of the game is off to the side, you know? So you can kind of just do it whenever you want. Okay, it's really easy to undershoot that jump. Okay, so now it's easy peasy. That's not to say I still might die here, just this part specifically. But after this, I should be okay. Because there's no more enemies. And it's kind of just fun exploration. What is that? That is 6 of 13. We're pretty much halfway there. So yeah, it's a little, uh, a little weird on the the curve of this game. But, in, but I really like it. Um, mostly because it's got... It's... The whole point of the game is exploration and searching. Uh, reminds me of oh, that game I did a, a couple weeks ago where you were activating the terraforming device. Uh, and I, I just kind of like that. Like this this short little tiny world with good sound. It feels pretty good. I mean, it can, jumps really floaty, but that's kind of the point. So it doesn't 
seem like a bad thing to me as I'm playing it. Um, but yeah, so you know, tight controls, good, good world, very pretty world. It's fairly immersive. You're curious, like, oh, is, what's up here? I'm climbing this weird tree structure. I want to see what's up here. Is there a house? No? Okay. Uh, that's 10? 11. Okay, good, good, good. So the last two, we have to jump properly. So very, very carefully, delicately jump. Okay, it's number 12. I believe if I fall straight, it should be good. Okay. That's easy, does it? Step, step, step. And good, 13. Okay. Fantastic. Wonderful. Excellent. Cool. So yeah, that was Lucid. Uh, there's a couple of pixels off to the right that you can't see. I cannot, for the life of me, get those captured. Basically, that should say at x underscore r x i. So you're missing about two characters worth of pixels, like one, two, three, four, five, five or six pixels of worth. I'm sorry that's not there for you guys. I'm sure it completely ruined your experience, but I appreciate you putting up with it, as always. And I'd like to thank Microphones for making this possible. See you guys next time. Bye.